We actually asked our audience um, to send in questions from kids. So kids from all around the world have sent in some questions for these astronauts. Hopefully they're, they're watching the live stream right now. <laughs> Um, the first one comes from Sienna, who, in te who attends an international school in Bangkok, Thailand. Um, she actually asked a bunch of questions, so her question ends a little abruptly because we just picked one of them. <laughs> How many days do astronauts stay in space? <laughs> there was a stream. There were about seven questions. Oh my God. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. Uh, to see them. If, if only one of you could answer each one, that'd be great. So, Leland, do you want to answer? Twenty-three those? days in space. Oh, 104 days in space. Chris, 44 total, I think. And soon, soon to be. be. <laughs> Training for a six-month mission. Yeah, we'll see. Great. <laughs> um, okay, our next question comes from Braith, who lives in Baltimore. Baltimore. My name is Clay oh, Hortensi, and is it possible to get from galaxy to galaxy? <laughs> is it possible to get from galaxy to galaxy, Grace uh -huh. asks. Thank you, dude. I'm glad he's thinking big. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, we're Please. gonna have to master this whole light speed thing, I think, <laughs> right. before we uh, get galaxy to galaxy. I mean, if you think about it, the nearest star is about two light, one point light years away, and it would take practically forever, even at today's speed, just to reach our nearest star. Galaxy to galaxy, it's out there on the horizon. You know, but think about it. Somebody in one of the earlier panels said something about how we have to really honor like our imagination. We have to think about in the last 60 years what we've done and what was really unimaginable back then and how we're sitting here talking to you about like multiple different kinds of vehicles going to a space station, back to the moon, onto Mars. You know, we, we just have to figure out how to do it. So his question was, is. is it possible? Is it possible? Is it possible? Yeah, I think so. Anything's yeah. possible. Absolutely. Kind of Maybe one develop, day. He'll, he'll develop the technology. Yeah, exactly. Please Brace take on you. Take on you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> All right, our next question is maybe a little tricky. It's from Mia, who lives in San Francisco. How do they make the fuel tanks balance so when they launch the rocket, it does not um, tip over? Ah, That's this girl's going to be an engineer for sure. Yeah, <laughs> dig in the shirt, too. Yeah. <laughs> First, send us a resume. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, they fuel those rockets very carefully. The pressures and temperatures uh, that they have to uh, match when they fuel those rockets are very carefully controlled. So I would say that very carefully. And there are also some structures out there, the, the framework that is next to the rockets when they fuel them uh, also provide support. But Wow, that is a great question, and uh, she's clearly thinking in uh, the direction our NASA engineers do, so send us a resume. Yeah. The mom math answer, or mom answer is math. <laughs> but you know one of the cool things about like the space shuttle is, you know, and I always thought it was so interesting, it's on the launch pad, and you've got this, the orbiter, the white orbiter, and the two solid rocket boosters in the tank, and the orbiter is hanging off the tank, and then the tank is attached to the two boosters, and the whole thing is attached to the launch platform by eight bolts. Oh, wow. You know, four of them at the base of each booster. And one of the super cool things about after you fly on a space shuttle is they present you, each crew member, with one of those bloats that are bolts, bolts that has like pyrotechnically blown to get you to space, and they make bookends out of it. It's oh, really? really? Cool. <laughs> really cool. That's awesome. <laughs> um, I really like our next question. It's uh, from Josh from Connecticut. Do you ever feel disconnected from, from Earth? Do you ever miss anyone in space? Oh. Mm. You know, there's so many ways in, in lower in the space station to keep in touch. I mean, we have internet now. Mm -hmm. You think about it, you could make a phone call if you had to. Right. I mean, think about John Glenn making a phone call from space <laughs> 60 years ago. You know, it was just something that didn't <laughs> exist. So there are, gra there are great ways to stay in touch. You can watch your family. Yeah. Now, you know, we need to start thinking about this, however, when we reach out to Mars where the time difference could be, you know, you can't talk real time because right. you're, you know, 20 or 40 minutes depending on which side of the sun you're on. So this whole idea of long-term separation from family is is something real, right? We, I mean, we have to deal with human emotions, and, right. and uh, you know, our next step is going to be out to a place called the Gateway on the other side of the moon, mm -hmm. and uh, that's going to be interesting because it's days away instead of just hours away in low Earth orbit. So I'm pretty excited about this next step that we will take on our way to Mars. And when you don't see Earth anymore out the window, right. one of the advantages we have in the missions we've done so far is that beautiful planet is there. And quite honestly, you you know, you are separated from it. You're missing it, but you're I don't know about the rest of you, but I felt more connected to everything and everyone on that place than I sometimes do when I'm right down here in the middle of it. And 
that's what I think about. Imagine that point where you're traveling and you just you don't have sight of that <coughs> anymore. That'll be an interesting time. Yeah. I watch my family eat my birthday cake while I did this <laughs> in space with no birthday cake. That was not cool, but you guys it was brought me birthday cake. <laughs> you birthday you cake. did. So birthday cake. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you don't. You just missed the birthday cake. <laughs> um, unfortunately, the time is almost out. But I would love to invite everyone to give um, our astronauts a round of applause. There, two American heroes.